Here we are in one of our original sections that we built when we first moved here. Slightly different to the others that you've seen. We've got um, 18 pairs in here rather than the 16. We only increased it to 18 a few years ago because at those very bottom there where you can see three along the bottom plus a little cupboard to the left used to just be an empty space under there and it was used by pairs that didn't want to hold their box and go under there and it really annoys me that. I'd rather them all be in the box, much easier to manage and much better to uh, keep an eye on things and you don't lose the eggs or youngsters in the straw or whatever. So we added the extra three boxes and put a cupboard which is where we keep the nest bowls for these sections as we have two sets of nest bowls, one that's in now and then a spare set for when the second round come. We use clay nest bowls and obviously as I said in a previous video we put straw in. These are also got their aviary today for the first time but as you can see everybody near enough is in their box apart from one cock on the floor. Now here you can see is one of the uh, tricks that I'm using. The three that are locked away, box one and box three, working from the top left this is, and then box six. One and three have both been out, both the yearling cocks. Uh, box one is a pair of yearlings, box three is a yearling cock with a three year old hen that's been in that box previously. And box six is a yearling cock with a eight year old hen, but she hasn't been there before. Now box one and box three are both holding their boxes, but box two is causing issues with them. So I've swapped them coming in and out. Two's been away, one and three have been out, and vice versa, like we have now. So later on today, I shall let those two pairs out. And I'm sure that they'll be fine today. Just the cock in box three isn't overly confident at the moment, but the hen holds that fine. Whereas in box one, they know where they're going, but they're also getting pestered by box six, the checker cock below, bottom left. Uh, no, well, not bottom left, middle left. As you can see in the middle left box six, I've actually got the cock sitting on the front there because he knows where his box is and the hen he's paired to is actually shut away behind. This is because for some reason she isn't very keen on pairing to him and when I have them flying out, she doesn't sit anywhere near him. So that means he then goes around pestering these other yearling cocks and driving them out of the boxes. Now if I can't get a pair to pair in the box, I'd rather have one flying out than both locked away because again they'll pair absolutely fine through the bars if they're willing but for whatever this reason is this hen doesn't want to pair she's usually very good I do have some spare hens and if she doesn't buck her ideas up then I shall swap the hen for another one but this is one of the tricks we use especially if there's a cock that's over aggressive and he knows where his box is we'll leave the hen behind with food and water and let the cock pair to her through there and that's been successful with a yearling cock and another eight year old hen in another section. They've paired absolutely fine and avoids the issues of the hen getting beaten up. As you can see fairly quiet and calm in here which is lovely. They've had their excitement flying out about an hour ago. The window's still wide open but they're all happy to be in here. We have a two year rotation for our stock birds. So this means that if we pair a pair this year, 2018, that pair will be paired in 2019, but in 2020 we will swap them to a new hen or a new cock. All our cocks stay in the same boxes each year, so it makes it easier for us to pair. We could always come back to a good pairing if we feel like it in the future. grit and minerals etc. We provide grit with redstone in it, it's there in front of them all the time and the same with pickstone pot. We usually use a red pickstone 
We used to give pink and black minerals, but it seemed to be a waste as the black minerals got soaking wet most of the time just through the dampness in the air, and the pink minerals they didn't seem to really touch, so we don't bother with that anymore these days. We try and take three rounds of youngsters from each pair, and hopefully if every pair has two per nest, that's ample for our requirements. Obviously this doesn't always happen due to infertility or even squashed or broken eggs, but as a whole we try and aim for the three rounds. So pairing up on the 1st of December means we should be done by the 1st of June without any problems. Obviously some pairs have more than three rounds and some pairs may only have the two rounds depending on how quick the hen lays and if everything goes to plan or if it doesn't. The watering is the same all year. We have a feeding water regime on our website and basically we give something in the water on the Tuesday and the Thursday so at this time of the year we have Averform and Red Cell which is the Averform Ultimate and Red Cell is what we is used in horses but is a good substitute for us for Johnson's Tonic as that's too expensive and we think that Red Cell is a better product anyway. We use cider vinegar on the Saturday we have brewer's yeast on the food on the Friday with lemon juice to help it stick and we use cod liver oil on Sunday. On Mondays and Wednesdays we put an oil which is for horses again, it's a garlic, parsley and linseed oil. We don't really measure the amount, I have a builder's bucket of corn and I put about 30 mil in that bucket. It's a good coating on the corn, I don't dry it off with anything and they eat it readily. For pairing up we have the conditioning seed in their food now until all the hens have laid in the section. If we're down to one or two hens that might be stubborn and taking a bit longer to lay they'll get conditioning seed in their nest box after 15 days. Other than that, the conditioning seed is removed from 15 days onwards and they don't need it again. We'll give home a form once a week and they have chicken layers pellets in their corn from the time we pair to the time we break up. This doesn't make them lay, but the idea of the layers pellets is that chickens get all they need in terms of minerals, vitamins from this in their daily feed and I think out of the 180 pairs it must be three years since we've had a soft egg and this was due to a hen that was aging and she had previously produced soft eggs in her younger years so we don't suffer with that problem at all really One box I missed earlier when I was talking is box 13. As you can see these are still locked away. The cock that's in there is a 2016 bred pigeon. He didn't hold his box last year which I'm not very favourable. But I've given him a second go this year with a 2014 bred hen. She's held a similar box before. Their hen and cock have both been out of that box in previous days. And again, the hen went back there, but the cock doesn't seem interested. If he doesn't buck his ideas up, he will be out, because I want a cock bird to be a cock bird and know what he should be doing. If he's not keyed on his box, then he isn't good enough for our stock loft. <laughs>